Hey, what's going on everybody? In this video, we're gonna be talking about iterators, a little bit more on collections, lots of juicy stuff. So I hope you guys are excited to start coding. I sure hope you're following along by typing out the code and you're not just watching because the real value from the series is getting the practice, getting your hands on, coding away. Now you can see I do have a chalkboard up here. I think tomorrow's episode, we're gonna take a break from the hands on and go over some concepts just to prep for some upcoming stuff. But it's always good to take a day off, but the ultimate goal for you guys should be to get mostly hands-on work, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. So let's just uh, jump in. So what we're gonna do is we're going to look at the collection interface. We talked about this a little bit in previous videos, but there's something specific I want to show you guys in that interface. Oh, look at that pretty face, ugh. So just search collections, Java, something like that, and find the Oracle documentation. And one of the things in here is iterator and uh, this is actually going to be in the method summary and what this does is it returns an iterator over the elements in this collection and we can use this to iterate through the content of our collection so it should be pretty cool basically we create a collection then we call this iterator method and then we can use whatever that returns to go through the elements so let's get some practice with this using our code uh, where to go here it is. So we're using this as a stack. And if you're following along with my Git repo, Caleb Curry, or no, github.com forward slash Caleb Curry forward slash 30 days of Java, and you're wondering what commit we're on, we are on this one. So we just did this. If you want to follow along exactly, you can find that code up in GitHub. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say names dot iterator and you can see it right there it returns an iterator over the elements in the list in proper sequence so if you want to go through the elements in sequence this is how you do it first we call that because it's a method and this is going to return an iterator so we would say iterator and give it a name it and hover over iterator and import iterator from java.util. Always be careful you're clicking the right one here so it knows what uh, exact type you're looking for. So there we have an iterator. And we can use this iterator object by saying it, which is the identifier, you can name it whatever you like, and pressing dot and seeing all of the different things that it can do. Now let's take a look back at the documentation for a second because I think there's actually one thing I want to do. You can see the exact type this thing returns right here and you can say it's iterator with the e and again that is generic coding so basically anytime there's an e it means you substitute a specific type in there so what what do we put in there we would put string because that is the content we have inside of the collection so now we can go back to our variable we can see the different methods in here and give them all a try now this iterator type, I actually want to look into this a little bit more to see what some of the options are for us. So let's go back to the documentation and I actually want to click this iterator with the E and you can see it's an interface. So this interface is going to define the rules for anything that implements this interface. So anytime you are working with something that's considered an iterator, it's going to implement this interface and in, in order to do that, it agrees to implement these methods. So these are the methods that are required for something to be considered an iterator. So we have next, that's a big one because that's going to give us the next element in the list. We have has next, which is going to say yes or no, whether or not there is another element. And we have remove to remove an element. And there is also for each remaining, we're not gonna get into that one in this episode, but maybe on in the future. But if you want, you can research that in more depth. So because we have this iterator of string type, we know it's going to have a next, a has next, and a remove, as well as a for each remaining, but we're not worrying about that. So let's check just to make sure. We can say eit dot next, has next, and remove. Indeed it does, so we're on the right track. So the way an iterator works is a little odd because you can't just reference the associated element. Rather, the way it works is it'll jump over an element and return 
that element that you just jumped over. So when you say something like it.next, what this is going to do is it's going to return a string, specifically the string you just jumped over. So it'll give us the first element. So if we just say sys out and we call it.next, we should get the very first element in the list. And I'm gonna get rid of these other outputs and I forgot to expand sys out, which isn't gonna to be too helpful, so I'll do that right now. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> Now remember how push works. Anytime you push, it goes to the beginning of the list. So Caleb's at the beginning of the list to begin with, but then we add Sue to the beginning and Sally to the beginning. So currently the list is going to be Sally's first, Sue is second, and Caleb is third. So when we do it.next, we're going to get Sally. And hopefully I'm right. <laughs> yeah, Sally. If we want to get that next element, what we can do is we can do it again and we can do it again. Oh, that was terrible typing. <laughs> All right, there we go, let's try it again. Now we get Sally, Sue, and Caleb. If we do it a fourth time, we're gonna get an exception. Java.util, no such element exception. Now to prevent this, what you can do is you can check if there is an element. So you can say if it.hasNext, this will return true or false depending on if there is another element. So if you took this and put it inside of an if statement, it's only going to execute if there is an element. Now we shouldn't get that exception and we're not going to get any output. But you're obviously not going to wanna to do that for every single element. So a better alternative would maybe to be using a while loop. So we can say while there is more elements, we want to print those. And you can just get rid of all of these calls because that while loop will take care of all of them. So when we run this, we should get the same output, no exceptions, and we don't have to worry about how many elements or how many times to print, it'll just do it for us. Now there's something known as a for each, which is going to take advantage of this technique behind the scenes, and here's what that's going to look like. You would say something like this, for, and inside of the for, you're going to say the type string and give it a name and a colon. Then you say where it's coming from, and you can say the linked list name, uh, which is called names right here. And then we can do something with that element, such as output it. So all we have to do is say S, and that's going to reference the element for each iteration. The first iteration, it's gonna be the first element, then the second element, and then the third element. So this is going to do the same exact thing as something like this. I mean, maybe not exactly the same, but you're going to get the same result in the console. So the first time it's going to say Sally Sue Caleb, then for this one it's going to say Sally Sue Caleb. In most scenarios, you're not going to have to work with the iterator. It's just kind of helpful to know that it exists and that you can use it if you need. And the reason you're not going to have to use it a lot is because there are other tools that are available to us. So for example, rather than doing this here, we can do this for each loop and it works just the same way. Another thing is that collections have methods that allow us to do similar things. So for example, what we could do is we could say names, which is our collection name right here, and then say dot add, and we can pass in, well, let's see, what do we wanna put in here? Let's go with Susan, and we're going to put that at index two, and this is a valid method call. And what we'll do is we'll actually print the entire list after we add that element. Oh, I got these backwards. I'm sorry. We will want to make this two and Susan unedited. Oh, look at that. All right run this and we get Sally, Sue, Susan, Caleb. <laughs> I don't know why I have three ladies names with S. This is a coincidence, but that's kind of weird. Now there is another useful method that you might want to use and that is list iterator. And when you do this, you are going to have to make that on the left as well, which will require an import. So if you hover over this, you can click import list iterator from java.util. And this, uh, we're still getting an issue. 
Okay. Uh, we want to make that lowercase l. Sorry about that. We're using camel casing here. Duh. And this is going to give us different methods. So for example, we'll have it.add, which will allow us to add an element based on where we are in this sequence. So for example, if we wanted to add a, a Susan here, like the third one, what we could do is we could say it.next, it.next, no, not has next, just next, and then it add, and we would just pass in Susan, and uh, we'll get rid of this, this other one here because we want to see, just to make sure we're not putting, you, yeah, you follow. Run this, and we get Sally, Sue, Susan, Caleb. So that's an alternative way of doing it, but personally, I think the add method directly on the list is a whole lot easier. So I guess you got some exposure to these list iterators. You may or may not use them, but definitely helpful to know how things work and a little bit more about what's going on behind the scenes. So what I'll do is I'll keep the code like this, I'll commit it to the repository, and then in the next episode, we're gonna be talking about something new because we're gonna be learning about backtracking and creating a maze game. So I'm excited for that. <laughs> yeah, all right. So we'll just say git add, we'll add that in there. Git commit, and I'm just going to say, iterators that'll explain it and then git push origin master 